I'm Tim Marlowe and every month I'll be bringing you my personal selection of the most exciting events and exhibitions from across the international calendar. This month, the biggest show to date for one of Britain's most idiosyncratic and spectacular artists. Mainland China devotes its first ever exhibition to the most important French painter of the 20th century. And New York tells the story of Buddhist art in India. But first, to Monaco and an exhibition that promises to leave more than just a fleeting impression. Claude Monet made his reputation in northern France but his first visit to the Riviera in 1883 was, as a new exhibition at the Grimaldi Forum seeks to prove, a pivotal moment in his illustrious career. Monet in full light features over a hundred paintings, at the heart of which is a group of canvases he made in Antibes, Rockbrun, Bordighera and, of course, Monte Carlo, which saw his palette brighten and the sharp, clear light of the south of France begin to illuminate his work profoundly. This should be an eye-opening exhibition and, given its location, Monet's impact will extend well beyond what we see on the walls of the galleries. Next, the life and work of Henri Matisse are the subject of a major retrospective at the UCCA Centre for Contemporary Art in Beijing. Matisse by Matisse is the artist's first solo exhibition in mainland China and looks to be well worth the wait. Displaying over 200 works, spanning seven intensely creative decades, from oils to textiles, and all from the personal collection of the great French artist, who had strong views on how his art should be displayed, and whose wishes are being respected here, to the extent that I think there's a tantalising whiff of posthumous self-curation being suggested. Now we're off on a spiritual journey to India by the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Tree and Serpent charts the inspiring impact that Buddhism had on art and the religious landscape in ancient India for over 600 years, starting around 200 BCE. More than 125 objects will feature, including major loans from India, spanning stone sculptures to metalwork, ivory, ceramics, jewellery, as well as, of course, painting. The exhibition promises to be enlightening in every sense of the word, dynamic on occasion, but also meditative. And just as Buddhist worship celebrates the senses, so it's hoped will this exhibition. Last, but by no means least, Britain's people's potter and national treasure, although we hate that description, Grayson Perry, sees his largest exhibition open to date in Scotland. Over 80 works at the Royal Scottish Academy in Edinburgh will be organised thematically and will wrestle with Sir Grayson's lifelong preoccupations of masculinity, sexuality, class, religion, politics and identity. Of course, the show will include plenty of pots, as well as prints, tapestries and a custom-built motorcycle, with the shrine on the back housing Alan Measles, Grayson's personal god and childhood teddy bear. Like the artist himself, the exhibition, Grayson Perry Smash Hits, will be vividly entertaining, as well as intelligently questioning. So there you have it, my selection of must-see exhibitions from around the world this July. I do hope you get to see at least one of them.